All right, here's a few more special features for um, part two of Adobe Illustrator. I want to go over the join tool and the join command. So there's two different things. So if I take my pen tool, for example, and I draw a shape. Let me make it yellow so you can see it. I click and 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 I click. But let's say I don't close the shape. Let's say I stop it here. What you can do, you just basically hit escape on your keyboard and now it stops. But what you'll notice is because it stops, it doesn't connect on the end. So you can join an incomplete path using the join tool. You simply have to go to the direct selection tool and select both of these points, or you can grab the lasso to select both of the points. And it's as simple as, ready? Control J, join and it will automatically join them. And then of course, if something doesn't work, like if it's too bumpy, pull your pin tool options out here. And then like there's an extra path there, I might go to minus and get rid of that anchor point. Now it goes straight through there. Um, remember, of course, you can also convert points. There's a button here to do it too. Um, so I can take this little button here and select this point. And if I hit this convert button, it makes it round, or if I hit this one, it makes it pointy. Or if I'm on this little guy, if I click and drag, then I can control it and decide where I want it to be. Or if I change my mind, just go back to it, click it, and switch it back. Easy peasy. Same thing, we can always put a plus somewhere along the path if we want, grab it with our um, white uh, arrow, and then adjust it as we see fit. So that's the join tool. Control J is the join tool. Now there is a join command, and that is, let's say you're not good with drawing with the pen, but you like to draw with other stuff. So for instance, I can draw a line with my line tool, and then I can draw like another line connecting to that line with my line tool, but technically they're not connected. And then let's say I, I go here, and I draw another one that's like, a curvy line, for instance, and then I'll hit escape. So now I've got a couple of lines. Oops, grabbed a hold of that with the wrong tool, sorry. Black arrow tool. So now I've got a couple of lines. I got one that's going like this, and I got this little guy here. Um, but let's say I wanna connect them. Let's say I wanna connect these guys. Or let's say, um, let me draw another curve. Uh, so we'll go here. And then we'll hit that, and then I'll hit escape. All right, so let's say I'm going to connect this down here, kind of like so. And then when it's all done, I'll join those two. So now I have a bunch of pieces, but I cannot fill them in because they're all separate pieces. And that's what the join tool is for. You can join if you've got um, a path that has multiple points. Um, the join tool is hidden underneath one of these guys. Now I have to try to remember where. Um, but once you find your join tool, you can select the points, kind of like you do with that lasso tool. You just kind of paint across the intersection. So where they intersect, which by the way, is almost impossible to tell on this one, where they intersect is where you're gonna connect them. There, that one went. And it's really kind of hard to tell. You have to go back out and then try it and see. So like that one's not connected, but now all of this is connected. I've got to find the point here. So it's right in here someplace. Um, so I'll grab that join tool again, and I just want to paint right there in that area. And they have to overlap, so I might, I may just probably don't have them overlapped. Let me scoot it over a little bit. There we go. Let's see if that works. I'll uh, kind of figure out where that area is. There we go, that did it. And now we've got those all connected. So now this is all one big path, which means I can fill it in. Um, but if I put a stroke on it, again, it doesn't go all the way. But then I could go back in and take this one here and select these guys and press Control J and connect them that way. So that's the join tool and the join command. I don't really use either one of those a whole heck of a lot, but that's what they are. Um, there's also the area type tool. So like, let's say I wanted to type in this blob right here. Instead of using the normal type tool, I can choose the area type tool. And then I can click inside this path 
And actually, I think you have to kind of click on it, but then it knows it goes inside. Now, you're, it's no longer a shape anymore. Now it's just something to type in. And as you type, it will fill in the shape. And so that's the area type tool. You can see there's also the type on a path tool if you wanted to type on a path. So let's say I have a circle like so, and I wanted to type along the edge of that, then I can take my type on a path tool, just click one time, and now I can type around that circle. Just remember that when you're using these special type tools, whatever you drew will disappear. And so now you're just dealing with what you have you know, up here. So like if you needed a copy of that circle, you probably need to alt drag and make a copy before you click to type on that path. That's kind of a really big deal um, on that one in order to get it to work properly. Um, the very last thing is just simply brushes and the different types of brushes that exist. I'm actually going to take a paintbrush and just make a little blob here like so. Um, but I want to show you the brushes panel. So window brushes, we should know by now that we can use anything in the brushes to stroke something. So here's my path. I can click on this and it strokes it in that. I can click on this and it strokes it in leather rope. So that's always a good time. Um, but you can load any other brushes and do the same thing. But brushes act differently. Like see, this one is a pattern brush. It's in a pattern and the pattern goes around. Whereas this one is just your normal kind of, you know, stroke brush that's going to go all the way across. Um, an art brush, I think, is what they call those types. You can see the different ones in here. So artists are your art brushes. Um, decorative, these are going to be your, well, this one is a scatter brush. And so these are going to jump around the path. Watch. Yeah. See, it's, it's a little bit obnoxious. You can change the way those look. Um, in some cases, <laughs> in some cases, no, um, but you can change what some of them um, look like in your appearance panel if it will let you, and this one particularly doesn't look like it will. There's sometimes a little button down here that will let you make changes to it, to the size and to everything else. This clearly is not one of them. Um, so you can see, I mean, some of these are not very useful. And you can create your own brushes. So let's say I wanted this little guy to be a brush and use it around the shape. I can just drag him, like get him like I want him. I'm making little bitty. I can drag him into the brush panel. So if I drag him in here, it's going to ask me, hey, what kind of brush do you want me to make out of this? Do you want an art brush that stretches along the edges? Well, maybe. If I do that and I hit OK, then it's going to give me some stuff. One of the only things you need to know is you want to tell it that you can do tints, which means you can change the color. Um, but I'll just leave everything else here for a second. Okay. Now, here's my little brush. And so if I click here, there it is. That's this stretched because that's what an art brush does. Okay. So that's my, I could have named it, but I didn't. Now, I can come back in here. And this one's using my art brush right now. So let me switch it back to basic. So I can come back in here and drag this in again. Oops, if I can get a hold of it. Drag it in again and make another brush with it. And if I make it a uh, art or a scatter brush rather, then I have the option on here to change it. So I can say, all right, the size, let's say it's random and it can go from this size to this size and it, it can change and this can have tints and it can be spaced at random and it can be scattered at random and it can go so far to so far. There's just like different things that you can set in here. And then when you hit OK, again, you can name it. Um, but when you hit OK, now you've got a different brush. See, it looks different because it's a scatter brush. So if I click on it, it scatters around. And in this one, unlike that last one, see, it has a button for options. So now I can actually control these different options. If you hit preview, you can see it. So I can control the randomness. I can control the spacing. I can control how much it scatters. Or I could say, I really don't want it to scatter. I want it to stay right on there. Or I want it to rotate different directions at random. And we get all kinds of crazy things here. So if the button, if the brush has a little button here like this, you can make changes. But if it has this, you can't. So, you know, if I come to one of these, now I'm on this screen, I have this button. So then I can come in here and I can change any of this stuff. So if the scatter is a bit too much, 
I can adjust, again, hit it on preview. I can adjust what I want it to be in here so that it can't scatter so much and then hit OK. So that's kind of the difference there between the scatter brush and the art brush. That's the main two um, that you would probably use at any one time. Um, the last little thing is um, changing the stroke. So let me switch this back to a basic stroke here um, and make it bigger. You can also come up here and modify these two things. Um, this one, of course, switches it back, or it's one of these fancy brushes, like one of these crazy things. But this one that says uniform changes whether it's just going to be boring and straight or whether it changes around the shape. And you can see here, gives you a kind of a different little look here when you've got it stretching, like it's thick, then it's thin, then it's thick, then it's thin. Um, and again, if I wanted to go back to normal, I'm just going to set this back to basic and set this one back to uniform, and that's always going to reset you back to the beginning and then you can come in and choose whatever it is that you want in its place so anyway that's just a couple of bonus things from um our part two study here of illustrator I, you know i wish we had a lot more time we could spend a ton more time doing stuff in illustrator but honestly we can only spend a couple weeks in the class on it um so you've got just about enough to be dangerous at this point um the very very last thing i want to mention is your pen tool when you're drawing with the pen tool you don't have to just click and let go and click and let go and click and, and seal it up to create your shapes. You can create shapes that have curves. It's hard to do, and in the sake of time in this class, we don't spend a bunch of time on it. But like, if I was going to type on a path, I could click, and then on this other side, when I click, I'm not going to let go. So I'm not letting go, and I'm dragging. And when you drag you create a curve. Now, if I were to continue, I could come back here and click and drag and it would, you know, I could change how this thing goes or whatever. Um, and then of course you can go back to your white arrow tool and you can make changes to your whole shape. So people who are really good at Illustrator are really good with the pen tool. Um, you know, like they'll start off and trace around something and click and then like click back here to make it pointy and then come back and then like click it again and make it round again and you know like they'll just they can do all kinds of stuff and there then you can take the rotation points here and turn these guys and make them go a different direction you know but again we don't have a ton of time um, to get into the pen tool but if you're ever bored it's definitely something to play around with um, in Illustrator because people who are good illustrators are excellent with the pen tool. So, all right, there's you some information to make you dangerous.